Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1391. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. And hey, we've got a great video here. We've got to see how to do case sensitive VLOOKUP. We're going to see four examples. Now, if we try to do straight vertical lookup and say, hey, look up Tyrone, and we need to distinguish it between the different cases here, comma, within the table, that's two columns. The second column has the item we want to actually retrieve, comma, so we put a two for column index, comma, zero for please do exact match, close parentheses, and enter. Well. Little case Tyrone is super happy because they're going to get big case Tyrone's rate. And the problem is that the vast majority of formulas in Excel cannot distinguish between case. So uppercase T and lowercase t are equal. You actually could even prove it to yourself by saying, hey, T, are you equal to T? And when you hit Enter, of course, it says true. T equal to so we're going to have to do something different. Now, there's a couple functions in Excel that can handle case. And the first one we're going to look at is exact. Checks whether two text strings are exactly the same and returns true or false. Exact is case sensitive. Well, we don't have just two items. I need to compare this item to all of them. So in the text one argument, I'm going to put a bunch of items. Now, that argument is expecting a single item. I just gave it four. This is actually called a function argument array operation because we gave it an array of items. And that will instruct exact to spit out an array of answers, comma. And then the second text item is lowercase Tyrone. Close parentheses with the cursor at the end. Let's hit the F9 key to evaluate. And sure enough, there's four items, just like there's four items here. And the fourth position has a true. So we can use that true to pick out the rate. Now, for this first example, notice we're trying to retrieve numbers. So I can simply convert these falses and trues to zeros and 1, and then multiply times these numbers to get at that 0.43. Control Z. Well, anytime we have arrays of the same dimension and we want to multiply them and then add them, we can use SUM product. Now, array 1, those are the trues and falses. So I come to the end, comma, array 2. I'm going to highlight those numbers. Now, normally, when you multiply trues and falses, that's a math operation. And math operations convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. But internally, some product is programmed to not do that. It doesn't like trues and falses. So when I hit Enter, that's not going to work. But no problem. F2, I can convert all of those trues and falses to ones and zeros with any math operation, times 1, divide by 1, exponent 1. I'm going to use double negative. Double negative is a well-known math operation that converts trues and falses to ones and zeros more efficiently, more quickly than any of the other options. So when I highlight in F9, I can see now I have my array that are properly sitting in four rows, numbers, times these four. Well, of course, 1 will be multiplied by 0.43 to give us three zeros and a 0.43, and then the sum can add. Now, again, the product part is the multiplying of the two arrays, and then the sum part is adding the result of that multiplication. So when I hit Enter, that is working. When I move this to uppercase Tyrone, just like that, boom, we have the correct rate. Now, for this first example, we were trying to look up numbers. So we were actually allowed to use multiplication to pick out the right one. If we try to use that formula on text items that we're trying to retrieve and bring back to the cell, doing case sensitive lookup, that method's not going to work. No problem. We're still going to use exact function, highlighting the entire column of names, comma. For text two, we'll say, hey, there's the name. We want a case sensitive lookup. Close parentheses F9. Remember, that's trues and falses. But notice, one, two, three. Positionally, the true says in the third position in this same sized array, 
we need to pick out that text item. So that sounds like the job for the lookup function match and index. But instead of using match and index function, I'm going to use the original lookup function in Excel, lookup. Now, I want to control Z on this. And these trues and falses, I actually want to convert to error values and 1. So control Z. Before I even use lookup function, I'm going to say 1 divided by. Now, cursor at the end in F9, notice now we have an array of errors and a number. Now, that resultant array right there would give match and index trouble, control Z. but the lookup function is absolutely one of the more amazing functions in all of Excel. It does all sorts of amazing things. And it was the original lookup function before VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. Now, lookup only does approximate match lookup. And watch this. Remember, comma, our resultant array right there is errors and ones. So for the lookup value, I'm going to say lookup1. Now, lookup only does approximate match. Because we're not going to have any duplicates, lookup will always take this number, race through, and find the last number, which for us will always be a single number one. And what makes lookup so handy here is it will ignore the errors. It will handle this function argument array operation and this operational division array operation here without any special keystroke. And that lookup vector, by looking up one, it's exactly like the match function. It'll find the third position, and then we comma and give as the result vector our position. And that's our formula, close parentheses and Enter. Now if I change this up to here to Joe, all capital, it better pick out the right rate and the position. Now F2, notice here we used exact. Well, there's actually another function that's case sensitive in Excel. It's the find function. Now, find and search are similar in that they can look for a smaller text string within a larger text string, which we don't have going on here. We're going to have an exact match. But notice, when it's looking through find is case sensitive. Search would not be case sensitive. Now, to show you what find does, I'm going to look at this larger text string and try and find AL. So find text, little a, little l, in double quotes within this. Now, this is how you normally use find. And it will count through on its finger. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 is the position that it returns. But because it's find, if I say find big Al, it doesn't find anything. F2, so we're going to take advantage of the fact that find is case sensitive. Find text, I'm going to look for Joe, comma, and we're going to do a function argument array operation in within text. I'm going to give it four different text strings. Now, for us, we're always going to get, since we're looking up something that already exists here, we're always going to get a 1 when it finds it. Close parentheses, F9, and you could see since Joe is matched here, it reports a 1. Now, let's notice something. This is a resultant array with errors and 1s. We don't have to, like with exact, do 1 divided by. So Control Z. This one's going to be even more efficient when we use lookup. Lookup value 1, comma, lookup vector. That's where to find the position. Come to the end, comma. And result vector is going to be our position titles here. Close parentheses and Enter. Now if I come up here and change this to Tyrone with a capital T, there they're all working. Now actually, uh, I wrote four examples here. And actually, we're going to see five examples. Now notice it also says case sensitive V lookup. Well, some product lookup and our last example, 5, are all more efficient than doing it with VLOOKUP. But just for kicks, let's look at VLOOKUP. So what we're doing here is we have exact, and we could have used find here too. But exact, F9, it's given us zeros and ones, Control Z. And notice it's in value 1 of the choose function. So what I'd like to do is notice that's value 2. 
So I want to combine these two columns into a lookup table. Now, what does choose do anyway? You give it an index number, and you actually put the items that you're looking up right into the function. But if you give it an array, index 1 and 2 simultaneously into index number, it will combine both of these two columns into a two-column table. So look at that. In the table array, if I highlight all of choose and hit F9, there's our lookup table. Now this is a, an array. Curly brackets house the array. Comma means go over a column, and semicolon means go down a row. So it's as if we had zero account manager, zero account manager, go down a row, zero staff accountant, zero staff accountant. And finally, we get to go down a row to one and chief financial officer. Boom. Control Z. Then we have look up, please look up one. Column index number is two because the thing we're retrieving is in column two. And then we're using exact match. Now, this formula is longer to type out. And I bet you it takes longer to calculate. And it requires the special keystroke because we have a bunch of array operations going on here. So we have to do Control Shift and Enter. If you don't use Control Shift Enter to enter this, it will not calculate correctly. Now you'll have to verify that our Control Shift Enter worked by looking up to the formula bar. And those curly brackets are automatically put in by Excel. That means, hey, it understood that you wanted this as an array formula. Let's try one last one. And this one's going to require Control Shift Enter also, but it might calculate more quickly than the, the rest of them. Now we can use find. I'm looking up Tyrone within this. Close parentheses. Now if I F9, remember that's errors and ones. So I'm going to use the match function. Now match finds the relative position of an item in a list. So lookup will be 1, comma, within that right there. Now I'm not going to put any match type here because the default is approximate. Remember that. Resultant array is always all errors except for a single one. So approximate match will race through until it finds that position. And that will give me, if I F9, 3, because that's what match does. It gives you the relative position of an item in a list. Control Z. Now I simply use that inside of index. The array, those are the items you want to look up, comma. And then there's the row number, or relative position. Close parentheses. And we're doing a function argument array operation inside of match. And this will require the special keystroke, Control Shift and Enter. Now, why Control Shift Enter sometimes and not? Well, sum product and lookup and aggregate function and chi square test all are functions that have arguments that can handle array operations without Control Shift Enter. VLOOKUP is not one of them, and neither is MATCH. Now, INDEX is one of them, but it only would work if we had the array operation in that argument. So if you want to avoid Control-Shift-Enter, these ones are probably not the way to go. If you have text items and you like not using Control-Shift-Enter, those are the way. And some product for numbers is pretty good. Now, I went ahead and timed these. I came over here, I have 1,200 records, which is not a really big data set, but it's certainly bigger than the four we had over there. Here's all of the formulas in the cell. There's what they look like when I entered them. I timed them four times, and they're virtually all identical. So timing uh, for this smaller data set, not much different at all. It does look like the lookup with find was the fastest, but notice the index was the second fastest. But if you look at these times, they're pretty darn close. All right, that was a lot of fun. With case sensitive lookup, some product and exact, we saw lookup and exact, lookup and find, VLOOKUP and choose, index and match and find. All right, we'll see you next video.